Hi everyone, Chris Parks with you here for our WOSN Soccer Show. We're joined by the Wapakoneta girls soccer team, a perfect 5-0 right now. We'll talk to them here in just a couple minutes. Five players and Coach Ross Kantner joining me on the set here. But first off, we're going to get to our Buffalo Wild Wings Player of the Week here as we kick things off. Buffalo Wild Wings on the set here, the girls and parents. And everyone watching is going to be munching down on those wings probably just a little bit here. But first off, let's get to our Buffalo Wild Wings Player of the Week. And that happens to be Isaac Elston from Salina. What a week for him. He had four goals, including this one at Bath earlier this week as Salina looking good early on. An easy punch in for him. He is our Buffalo Wild Wings Player of the Week. Four goals this week. A big week for Isaac. Congratulations to him. And of course, we'll hand that award out to a different player every single week as the season does go on. But from that now, let's get to some soccer highlights around the area. Lots of good soccer games this week. Let's start off first with St. Mary's and Shawnee. <coughs> Boys soccer from West Elementary School. 1-0 this one happening on Thursday night. Now tied up at 1. Austin Davis scoring a goal. And we are tied up at 1 as the Indians get things going in the first half. Then it's Trey Brock taking the shot. That one, a diving, sprawling save made by the St. Mary's keeper. A little bit later on, Ryder's trying to get that second goal. Nathan Wilker takes a shot. That one is saved. The final score from this one has St. Mary's taking it 2-1. A WBL victory and win for them. Let's take a look at the Wapakoneta boys soccer team hosting the Kenton Wildcats. Already up 2-0 here. A little bit later on, Alex Lousy gets a shot, and that one saved by the Kenton Keep. A little bit later on, more Wapakoneta pressure. Cody Benny down the sideline, takes a shot. That one fired just a little bit wide there. Kenton trying to get things going as well, too, down on their end. John Zerba to Brandon Hopman, little chip shot. Saved there by Caleb Miller. A little bit later on, Sam Weingartner for the Wapakoneta Redskins trying to get things going. Takes that shot with the left foot. That one does find the back of the cage there. Wapakoneta, an easy win over Kenton as the Skins. The boys team looking good so far this season. They win 8 0 with that high flying offense. From Wapakoneta now to Elida, they enjoyed a 5 0 second half lead on the Defiance Bulldogs and looking for more. Right footed rip here by Jared Littler, scooped up though by the Bulldog keep for Defiance. Then Oliver Fister. Make it a run, tough shot here, just wide of the cage, still 5-0 white. He'll add a corner kick now, this one headed out by the Blue Dogs. Ten minutes to go in this matchup, the Norwegian exchange student Simon Dumas buries this one in the back of the net. Dogs stay perfect with the victory. They win 6-0 over the Defiance Bulldogs, so a nice start for the guys from Elida. Down I-75, Botkins and LCC boys soccer. No score in the first half, the ball bouncing around. The cage here, Zach Schrader for LCC gets a shot, but it's saved here by Christian Hoskins. A little bit later on, ball ahead for Matt McNamara, but the goaltender will make a sliding save here to keep this one scoreless. Sean Daly trying to get things going here for LCC. He'll take a shot, rips it a little bit wide left of the mark there. A little bit later on, a corner for Daly. This one goes to McNamara, clanks it off the post, cleared away by Kyle Meyer. Finally, a direct kick for McNamara, and he's going to score. Makes it 1-0 LCC, and the T-Birds are undefeated so far this season. They win 6-0 over the Botkins Trojans. Kaleida for Jennings. Little PCL soccer from Kaleida High School. Cats and Jennings tied at zero late in the first half. Musketeers a high arcing shot. Nice save, though, by Brent Hovis as he skies to make that one. A little bit later on, the Cats bounce off it as this one goes off the crossbar. The Ford's Brandon Earhart does corral it to make the play. Back to the Jennings end here. As Ryan Elbrock will do a little bit of dribbling. He'll take a shot, but a better save here by Hovis, keeping it nothing, nothing. Collider, though, does get the victory. They tack on three, two in the first half, one in the second half, and they win three, nothing. Girls soccer now, kids playing on the dirt mound outside the Liberty Benton and Shawnee girls soccer game. Indians up one, nothing early. Eagles looking for the equalizer, but that shot pushed well, just a little bit wide there. A few minutes later on, Sam Johnson's goal, as that one does go in in the progress, but ties the game up at one. A little bit later on, the pound squad trying to cross it through, but Kelsey Flieger clears that one for the Tribe. Then a through ball to Kayla Trevino, but the Shawnee keep. Tessa Bard makes the play there, comes out and gets it. This one tied at this point, and it ends in a 3-3 tie. Two pretty good soccer teams in our area, Shawnee and Liberty Benton. For the team we're featuring tonight, the Wapakoneta Redskin girls taking on the Coldwater Cavaliers. Some highlights from this one here is a shot Put on by the Skins header, and that one saved by the Cavalier Keep. A little bit later on here, a little run here by Brianna Picano. 
And then over to Sarah Warner. That's actually that one taken away by the Cavalier defense there. A little bit later on, more pressure here as that one kind of hit off of the Cavalier defender. Another shot, and that one scooped up as Wapakoneta does get the victory over the Cavs. one nothing. the final score from that one. And we'll head now back to the set here, joined by the Wapakoneta girls soccer team. Coach Kaner, you guys are off to a 5-0 and start right now. What's been the key behind this great start for you guys about a week and a half, well, about two weeks into the season now? I believe the uh, biggest key is the kids have been working very hard. We had a great summer of conditioning, mm -hmm. and uh, the chemistry has been excellent, and uh, the kids are just playing hard, playing good soccer. Sarah, what have you seen on the, the pitch so far this season? It's making things a little bit different than 2012 now into 2013. 2013. Uh, what's kind of the difference for you guys so far this season? Well, this year we changed up our formation a little bit, made it more offensive, so we're able to make a little bit more goals this season, which really helps us out. Have you guys taken a page from maybe the boys' playbook as well, too? They seem to be scoring, like, seems like seven, eight goals a game. Are you guys kind of pushing the mentality that way as well, too, Sarah? Yeah, we're really trying to make everybody an offensive player, even the defense at some point, so... Megan, being just a freshman on the Swapakonetta girls soccer team, you've got to be excited about the way things are happening. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the upperclassmen, maybe like Sarah, some of the other girls that are going to be on a little bit later on. How have they helped you maybe develop your game so far this season? Sarah and I think the managers also, Hillary Vaughn, mm -hmm. she helps out with the practices and everything. Sarah's a leader, and I like hanging out with her, and she helps me in practices. She does a great job. Swapakonetta team, you can tell, really, really close coaches that uh, – a uh, fair assessment, the girls real close, everyone kind of gets along, and it seems like uh, practices and games go pretty smoothly for you guys. Yeah, this group of girls, uh, they're a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are a, a good, just good kids. And, um, Full of energy, too. They came to the studio pretty pumped yeah. up. Um, and, you know, it, you talk to girls' coaches, and they always make comments about the challenges of coaching girls. And i got to say, this group has been a joy. Um, they don't have the little clicks. They are truly a team. We, mm -hmm. we call them olders and youngers. Our older kids and the youngers are, are freshmen. And um, throughout practice, an older is always with a younger. And um, so every drill we do, someone's matched up with a younger kid. And I think it's helping the younger kids get acclimated to the high school game. And you know, it's paying off, I think. What's the biggest difference between 2012's team and 2013 team? Has it been kind of like a 180 for you guys, or is it uh, just like subtle differences for you? Um, for me, personally, it's, it's 180 because the attitude of this group is just great. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they trust the coaches, they do whatever we ask, and they work extremely hard. Um, this is my third year as the, the head coach, and this team uh, I feel like they finally have, have bought into what I'm trying to do. In years past, there was still the residual effect from mm -hmm. the previous coaches. So um, for me, it's a 180 degrees that these kids, they're, they're doing what I'm asking. So um, for them, it may be more uh, casual change, but mm -hmm. for me, it's been a, a lot of fun. Sarah, you guys have posted a couple of shutouts as well, too, so far this season. Seems like the defense has gotten better as well, too. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, it's fair. Um, well, we spend more time on the offensive side of the ball this mm -hmm. year, so defense is really a lot easier because so, they don't attack as much. So, How many girls do you have beyond that midline uh, attacking at one time? What do you think? Out of the 10 you have on the field plus the goalkeeper, how many do you think are up beyond that line? Probably five or six. About five or six or yeah. so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Megan, the, the schedule ahead, uh, I'm sure you guys probably aren't looking too far ahead, but uh, what do you think of the WBL this season and how challenging do you think it'll be for you guys to get through that schedule? I think that all the teams are going to be a challenge. Um, St. Mary's and Salina mm -hmm. are going to be harder, but we're looking at the next game, always going to be the hardest. Coach, in the WBL, it seems like it's tough every single year. You've gone through this, gone through the rigors. Uh, have you got a chance to see any other uh, schools you're going to be playing a little bit later on this season? Um, well, we were over to scrimmage in St. Mary's. Uh, I was able to get up and see Elida earlier. Um, so haven't had a great chance to see a lot mm -hmm. of teams. But, uh, you know, the, the WBL this year, I think, is very even. Okay. I, I really don't think that there will be an undefeated champion. I think we're just going to uh, be beating each other up top to bottom. 
physical play, Sarah, is that uh, something you guys stress in practice and stress in games as well, too, or do you guys maybe aren't as physical as other teams? What do you think? We're very physical. We like to push each other off the ball if we have the chance, and we just like to like push the tempo a lot and make it like more like speed and physical too. So practices kind of like simulate what you guys do in games. Then yeah, we have a lot of pushing each other off the ball, mm -hmm. a lot of you know yeah. Okay, very good. That's our first segment here with the Wapakoneta Redskins. When we return, three more players will join me on set as we continue to talk about the great Wapakoneta start to their season. 5-0 and right now. We'll munch on some B-dubs wings in just a little bit when we return next on WOSN. Welcome back to our WOSN Soccer Show here. Three of the young ladies from Wapa Canada joining me now. Sitting next to me is Kylie Damon. Right there in the, about the middle of the set there is Mackenzie <laughs> Cluster and Carly Jarvis is down there on the other end of the set. Ky uh, Kylie, let's put you on the spot here first. You guys are 5-0. and oh. uh, I kind of asked Coach this already. What's been clicking for you guys? What's been different this year as opposed to last season so far for you guys? Um, I think that we've been having like more intense practices mm -hmm. than last season. The more intense practices kind of transpire, kind of transpiring over the games then as well, too. Yeah, yep. Okay. Mackenzie, what have you seen uh, in practices? Have you guys been doing things differently in practices to kind of prep you guys and prep yourselves for games? Uh, things been more intense? What's that kind of been like for you guys? Um, we definitely do a lot more uh, game-like situations, mm -hmm. like more defensive and offensive drills that would happen like in a game. And uh, we do go a lot more. Um, intense and aggressive and we're all working hard and pushing each other so you guys have scored a lot of goals so far this season the offense really seems to kind of be clicking is it more of exciting to play in an offense kind of like this where you guys are getting three four sometimes even five goals a game Mackenzie yeah it's a lot more exciting that we're scoring uh, <laughs> more goals than what we have in previous years I mean it just feels good to score to actually be on the board mm -hmm. Put, so. Putting points up on the board, putting goals up on the board, I should say. <laughs> Always the important thing here. Carly, uh, I'm going to ask you an off-the-wall question here. We've been talking oh, so serious okay. about you guys here. <laughs> Let's put you on the spot here. Okay. Who's the biggest team, like, who's the most outgoing personality? Who's maybe the biggest clown on the team? Who kind of gets you guys riled up in practice? Can you put someone on the spot I think they know who I'm going to say. I'm going to say Amy Bendeley. Okay. She Explain is just <laughs> hilarious, and she gets everyone pumped up. Um, She's a great player to be there to encourage people and motivate people. And she's always just really excited about whatever we're doing. And she's just a great person. Favorite drill you guys do in practices or something that sticks out in your guys' mind? Any of you guys can answer this one, or you guys can all answer it if you want to. What's something you guys do in practice that instead of running or doing something else like that, that kind of <laughs> that you guys enjoy to do? Um, Any one of you guys can take I this. like dog fights where they basically just throw a ball out and two people go and just try to like get the ball first and <laughs> score and anything really goes except you know you don't want to hurt your teammates but it helps you be more aggressive and teaches you kind of more of a game situation. Mm -hmm. Same thing for you Kylie, probably that your favorite drill? Um, yeah I like 3v3 okay. games. Mackenzie what about you? I like the same, I like doing like offense defense kind of like drills like going against each other because it's more game like and gets us prepared for the games. So. Okay. Carly, kind of take me through your upcoming schedule. Who do you guys have coming up this week and uh, what games are you looking forward to, uh, uh, I guess, in the next seven days? Uh, our next game's Elida, and I think they're going to be a really good game for us. I think we'll match up well. And just all of our games, I think, are going to be fun and exciting. I think we got a great team this year, and it should be a lot of fun. Should be a good time here for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Already 5-0 and so far this season. Toughest WBL team you guys think you'll think you'll face this season. Kylie, I'll start with you. Um... If you had to pick one right now, I know it's early in the season, but toughest WBL opponent. Honestly, I think it's Elida because I feel like we match up really well with Elida. Mackenzie, same thing for you too. You I'd think? have to say Elida, Salina. Salina obviously has been pretty good previous years, so they're going to be a tough opponent to beat. Two teams to look out for too. Maybe Elida, Salina. You got St. Mary, Shawnee also. All very good teams as well too in the WBL here. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. Some games to look forward to this week. Tuesday, boys soccer action at Wapakoneta. Bluffton will take on those Wapakoneta Redskins. Should be a good game there. Thursday night, boys soccer. A good one in the PCL. Continental taking on Fort Jennings. And then Thursday, after the Elida game, this girls soccer team from Wapak will take on LCC. Do you guys know anything about the Thunderbirds at all? They're off to a good start as well, too, so far this season. I'm sure Coach has you focused on Elida, but uh, do you guys know any of the girls on the team? 
do you know anything about LCC at all? I know that they play tough. Mm -hmm. That's about all I know about them. Okay, they're a tough team as well too. The <laughs> schedule doesn't get any easier for the Wapakoneta Redskins. They got to keep on going through the rest of this season. That's going to wrap things up here. I want to thank Buffalo Wild Wings, our sponsoring Isaac, uh, a little bit later on or a little bit earlier on in our show here. I want to thank all the girls for stopping in. Parents also too, watching <laughs> coaches and everyone. I want to thank everyone, our staff here at WOSN, for everyone here. I'm Chris Parks. We'll see you next time on the WOSN Soccer Show.